The person and work of Jesus Christ are under scrutiny today. We are taking Jesus at his word, neatly organized and highlighted in red in Stephen K. Scott's The Greatest Words Ever Spoken. Today's heading, Jesus' Relationship with God the Father. Steve, uh, this is a little bit of a who's on first. For some people, there really is confusion right. about uh, the position and the approach, even when you pray, should mm -hmm. you pray to the Father? Should you pray to Jesus? You know, it all gets wrapped up yes. in understanding. We've blurred the distinction in 20, 20th and 21st century Christianity. We've blurred the distinction between the Father and the Son. We've been so focused on the doctrine of the Trinity, mm -hmm. we forget that they are three persons. And what happens when a person begins to see the Father through the eyes of Christ, that distinction all of a sudden becomes very tangible. It's amazing. In fact, Jesus lived for the Father. The Father was the reason He came to earth. He didn't come to earth for you and me. He came to earth out of love and obedience to the Father. Yes, He shares the Father's love for us. He willingly laid down His life. Yes, for the sheep but it was out of obedience and out of love for the Father. Listen to some of the things he said about his Father. This, by the way, of all the subjects he talked about, this was the one that his heart was wrapped around the most. This is the heart of Jesus Christ speaking. Whenever he talks about his Father, he is so in love with the Father. This changed Gary Smalley's life when he, for the first time, began to really see the Father through the Son's eyes. Listen to what he says. He said, um, the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Mm. See, every thought, every intention, every motive, every action, every deed, every attitude, everything Jesus did, he did to please the Father. That's how much he loves the Father. Why? He alone has seen him. He said in another verse in this same topic, he said, I'm the only one who has seen the Father. Think about that. And he said, the only one who knows me is the Father, and the only one who knows the Father is me and those to whom I choose to reveal him. If you want to know the Father, the only way it can come is if he reveals the Father to you. That's what Jesus said. And he will reveal the Father to you like never before as you begin to get into his words about the Father. People think he said one or two things. He said pages and pages. In fact, he talked about God's desires, God's love, how to love God, all these incredible different things that we need to know about the Father. For, you know, Jesus said, he who honors not the Son honors not the Father. The converse of that is true. He who doesn't honor the Father doesn't honor the Son. And how can you honor the person you don't know? Jesus said to the, Pharisees, to the scribes, he said, you study the scriptures because you think that in them they have eternal life. You have eternal life. And yet they are that which testify of me and you will not come to me for life. In the NIV, but you refuse to come to me, me to have life. life. And missing it. You're missing, missing it completely. It. And he said, you don't know the Father. If you knew the Father, you would love me. See, even though they studied the scriptures, they didn't know the Father. Jesus came to reveal him. And in his words, as you begin to read, there's a whole section of 16 different topics that Jesus talks about in his relationship with the Father. And as you see those, you won't even believe what you will see. You will see the heart of Christ. You know, um, Gary Chapman, who wrote Five Love Languages. Oh, he's been here many times. Yeah, he said, if you want to know the heart of, the, heart of Christ, then read what he says. And this book makes it easier than ever. And uh, the well, same- Well, he came to reveal Amen. God, yes. the Father. Yes. He said, if you want to know what God is like, look at look me. Look at me. If you've seen me, you've, you've seen, seen the, the Father. Father. In fact, he said that at the Last Supper, after Philip had been with him for three and a half years, Philip said to him in John 14, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. And Jesus said, have I not been with you for so long, Philip, and yet you have not come to know he who hath seen me has seen the Father. Okay, 
you're right. But he also had been telling them for three and a half years exactly what the Father was like. You see, Jesus said, learn from me in Matthew 11. That means we listen to what he said and we look at his life. And I can tell you, most Christians that I know know very little of what Jesus said, and that's the tragedy. And we, we also miss, as the disciples did, mm -hmm. the, the model of his life, because I, I'm sure it was Majorian Thomas who, who repeatedly Amen. said, you know, Jesus never ceased to be fully God, but he never lived on earth as less than fully man, yes. fully man. He, he, set aside, he set aside his divinity when he exactly. came to earth. He had to live by faith, empowered by the Holy Spirit, just like we do. Exactly. He had to be tried and tempted in all things, just like we are. Learned from the things he suffered. But he did not fall to temptation. Didn't, didn't sin. Amazing, amazing. He said, I live the law perfectly. He fulfilled every letter of the law, the spirit of the law. Amazing what we see when we study the person of Jesus Christ. But he said, listen to me. In fact, this is really interesting what the Father said about Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Here Jesus is talking to the most revered prophets of the Old Testament, Moses and Elijah. And Peter says, Lord, let's, let's make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And all of a sudden a white cloud came upon them and they heard the angry word, Lord God. They didn't hear the comforting words of God. They heard God say in an angry voice, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And it says they were terrified. They fell on their faces in terror. And then they looked up. Jesus said, get up, don't be afraid. And they looked up and the other two were gone. You see, God wants us to listen to His Son. The Word became flesh. But Christians today, we listen to everybody else, mm. and we fail to listen to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you have made it so wonderfully accessible. Mm, uh, you. Stephen, you've you, you put a lot of your heart and life into the greatest words ever spoken. And um, we're just so thrilled. We were you. delighted. You know how excited we were that you could be with us this month, that we could be offering you this uh, wonderful resource. A uh, great tool as well, because it's organized by category. Uh, it's a great witnessing tool. Amen. Great Amen. Uh, way to access the living and active Word of God and specifically the very words of Christ. Uh, there's so much more I want to talk about. Here, I want to end with this. Jesus said, his prayer, that they, that would be we, <laughs> may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. You said at the beginning of this segment, these are persons. The Holy Spirit isn't in it. Amen. It's he. 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 Yep. <laughs> and uh, they are the most intimate community. And that is the Lord's desire, that we would be part of that intimacy, that highest, most rewarding love relationship. Yes. And John 14 says that we can enter into that as we begin to discover and do what Jesus said. John 14, 21 and 23. Mm. More to come and more with Steve tomorrow. And please, please uh, stand with us. You've helped us stand strong all these years, over half a century. And we have much more to do in Jesus' name. Will you stand with us? Be in touch, will you? Call right now and uh, be sure to get a copy of your book. Our thanks to you. God bless you.